Hello everyone, this is Mr. 13 Things, continuing on a discussion of how we can go about getting our students to perhaps engage a little deeper in the math uh, by tying them earlier and earlier into the mathematics of what happens in their Game Boys, their PSPs, or even paper dolls or guns, if I guess if we put it on a sheet of paper. And so I'm going to try to see if I can, I'm, I'm using a program here as done by Sal Khan. That is a program called SmoothDraw. I'm using Camtasia, which is actually a pro version. Um, so it does have a little bit of cost. So I want to let you know that, that there is a free version. I'm erasing out. I'm erasing most of my stuff here so I don't have to start a new. It's a lot of the same functionality edit cut. I'm going to point out the background to my photo here or to my work is a little off color from Sal Khan, so we differentiate. We are trying to emulate what he does, some of it, but we want to make sure that students, A, know that he is not the only guy out there doing this. They should be the ones doing this as well, and there will be. There's a, there's, there's a great uh, set of people doing math videos out. Let's see if I can do this. They can probably do a better job. I'm trying to suck up the color, and now I go to here. I'm going to fill this out. And I've got my points here. So picking this up, what we have, and we're going to discuss now, we have a triangle on a coordinate plane with the origin here. This is a plane uh, where, it, in fact, like a sheet of paper, the Z or the thickness is zero. Implied in that is that it has an elevation uh, of zero. And so a point that's written 1 comma minus 1, in this case, is written this is a minus one, sorry. It's written minus one, minus one, zero as a column vector. And we add in, you're going to see why in a second, the one scale factor. And we teach students very quickly to use a different color so they realize the real vector is minus one, minus one, and zero. What I'm going to now do is talk about the concept of transformation. And the idea here is that to transform this shape, if you transform uh, the shape you're going to be actually wanting to transform each of the individual points. If you transform each of the individual points you will have transformed the shape. And you can play with students and they can kind of get that a little bit I think. They do a lot of animation, uh, animation stick figures. If you deal with the points you deal with the edges. If you deal with the edges you deal with the polygon. Now later on and you get into different types of transformations you can realize that if it's a translation you're changing each of the points equally. If it's a rotation there is going to be a difference and that is ties to a skill that you're going to need to present to students at around fourth grade when they're capable of it and not around junior year in high school when the curriculum says it goes there. I will dedicate that concept to a teacher called Mr. Roloff uh, back in Chicago schools ages ago that taught us trig in seventh grade and the only reason he didn't teach us trig in fourth grade I am convinced is because he didn't teach fourth grade. All right so I'm going to go through here and we're not going to call it trig of course because that would be a not a good thing. We're going to call it something else when we do it. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of more editing. I'm cutting here and I'm going to realize I'm going to get rid of all the other points now to make it a little bit simpler. Edit. Cut. And so you can start to let students know that if you're going to do one point or two points or a thousand points, <coughs> that's what their Xbox is doing. But you're going to teach them how to deal with one point. And then teach them how to let the computer deal with more than one point. All right. And the way you're going to think about doing that is get them to completely ingrain in their brains that they're going to dual account when you show them a coordinate plane of minus one comma minus one they're going to dual account with a column vector realizing that it has zero here in elevation you could have them pick up the paper and then change it to one the concept that in fact everything has three coordinates and there's some great science fiction regarding that you can then once you get the concept that you're going to do this dual accounting or dual um, Terminology is not the word I'm looking for. Uh, it'll come to me. I'm having a Perry moment here. 
Um, you're going to realize that this point is going to be transformed, and when it's transformed, this stack of four is going to be transformed by a stack of four fours, right? So this stack of four is going to be transformed by a stack of four fours, but you're going to, at this point, tie them into one of the most important concepts in mathematics, which is the identity rule. And you know that if A, right, is the number, then A times one equals A, right? You also know that if A is the number, then one times A is equal to A. Right, so you're going to teach them to the multiplicative identity rule in some way, shape, or form. And, but the way you're going to want to do it is you're going to want to actually think about the A being here and the 1 being in front. Because at this point, I'm going to plug for the first time formally www.betterexplained.org. BetterExplained.org, a gentleman named Khalid, will talk about what multiplication really is and what it is mathematically with integers, with negative numbers, with, with, with complex numbers. But I want to talk about what it is with Xbox. So what we have here is something like a point, and we're transforming it with one, and it's staying the same way. So you can write that up. And the key point here is that this is the thing that's going to be transformed, and this is the transformer, right? Transformer. And you can draw a picture of a transformer. Be a bad picture for me, right? Transformer, he's going to have a... Right? This is the transformer. This is the transformee. And the matrix equivalent to 1 times A, A being a shape, it should be a shape, it could be a triangle, you are transforming the shape and not changing. You're ending up with the same shape. And students are quite capable of doing this is to say 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and then 0, 0, 0, 1. They're quite capable of saying that, writing it, and not necessarily even understand that this is the same as one in matrix speak. This is called an identity matrix. And this is the identity transformation matrix. Identity transformation matrix. All right, so from there, you're going to have a lot of different paths that you can go along, but you know that you have something that describes a point in space. This is going to end up with what? The same thing, because you're transforming it right by 1. It's the identity transformation, and so minus 1, minus 1, 0. And again, see if we can still use that sucker here. And it'll turn out to be the same from the scale. Later on, I think you can change this number and see what it does to it. But the fact is that anything transformed by 1 or transformed by the identity matrix is the same thing. Anything transformed by 1 or multiplied by 1 or transformed by the matrix equivalent of 1 is the same thing. Realistically, you would no more often use hand methods to multiply a matrix by a vector, a matrix by a vector, than you would to multiply by hand 536 by 675, realistically. You want to know how to do it. You want to practice it. And what's a beautiful thing about matrix multiplication is you can crowdsource it to your class probably easier than you can crowdsource that. So you can crowdsource, if you want to take it to a larger dimension, a 10 by 10 matrix multiply by a 10 by 1 vector. You can crowdsource it to your class a lot easier than you can crowdsource pieces of this. And so I'm throwing up another word here, and this is idea of crowdsourcing. Right? Uh, crowdsourcing of programming, crowdsourcing of looking for aliens, um, or just basically crowdsourcing or open sourcing. All right. So 
to review, be finishing up my 10 minutes and it's not a hard and fast. What we've done here is we've taught students that in fact anything that is 2D or 3D is in fact 3D. At some base level you can divide up anything into a bunch of little triangles, triangulation if you would. Those triangles will be defined by sides and those sides are defined by points. And if you deal with each of the points individually, you can do whatever you want to do, like happens on your Xbox. You teach them dual accounting, that they can still work with ordered pairs, but they learn to put things in stacked vectors, which have the first place being the X, the second being the Y, and the third one being the Z, and then the fourth one just being a scale number. So you can teach them that instead of dealing with a whole set of points, you can deal with each point individually, and then you can transform each point with the first transformation being the identity transformation, which is the same as one. One times anything is the same thing. We'll pick it up from there to talk about why this is different from what you'll see in a lot of math books, and then give credit to Martin Reinhardt uh, out in the SketchUp community in from SketchUp to Rubies or Rubies to SketchUp or Edges to Rubies or whatever his book name. We'll give him credit for really showing us, many of us, how it makes sense just to stick all of the transformation together when you're dealing with 3D shapes. Thanks for listening.